was the bathing machines and people like Martha Gunn who attracted my hero to Brighton. So a nice little link then also to the Theatre Royal. Um, a very familiar phase, it's the Prince Regent, also known as uh, um, the Prince of Wales before he became Regent um, and later George IV, and to some of us also known as Prinny. And um, if you look at this portrait, this is what well, basically, if you see pictures of George, they fall into two categories. You have these ones, um, usually commissions uh, by sort of safe uh, artists of the time, this one here by Lawrence, and they show him in all his splendor, looking dashing with this, this sort of romantic tousled hair, you know, there's a bit of Byron in that, uh, grand costumes. Uh, the other category is um, uh, a large, large number of very sharp, um, unsparing, vicious, witty, funny caricatures from the Regency period. And you can see some of them going up on display in the museum very soon because we've just acquired lots of them. And those caricatures show a very different George. They show him as, uh, well, sometimes as a fat and flatulent mandarin, at other times as the Prince of Wales with a big H in Wales, yeah? Um, a drunkard, a gambler, um, an altogether despicable person, really. A playboy who liked women um, who were, and this is a quote, uh, fair, fat, and 50. Uh, so altogether a figure of fun, really. So. A man who was vain, pompous, a spendthrift, a womanizer, God, what else can you think of? Um, a less than average monarch um, who had questionable taste. Why should I be his advocate? <laughs> well, um, for me personally, he's my hero because I work in the Royal Pavilion and this, it's such a privilege. It's the most extravagant, madly beautiful, romantic building in the world, I'd say. And it has sprung entirely from his crazy, creative, deluded mind. And let us not forget this. He, it was all his idea. And um, it's a fairy tale place, really. Uh, probably the largest folly in England. And uh, yes, uh, he was desperately unpopular at the time. Uh, hundreds and thousands of pounds were spent on this folly. And this being England, this was partly public money. Um, so you can see why people in Brighton liked him, but not the rest of the country. <laughs> but in the end, he gave this building to us. He left it to us. This is, this is the most, you know, this is an emblem of Brighton, and it's now ours. Um, so this building, as mad as it is and as, as, as unusual, uh, really made Brighton when it was built 200 years ago, um, and still does make it that bit more exciting controversial and a bit more fun than other places in England. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm not English. I'm German, and uh, incidentally, so was the Prince Regent. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I was asked to do this. But uh, I remember coming here 14 years ago, and in true German fashion, I went on a very organized trip around the country, looking for places to live, uh, sort, of, sort of ticking off places. And I will never forget the first time I saw the skyline of the Royal Pavilion, this roof line, uh, with the sea in the background glittering, and then all this noise around it, all these people, these colorful people, the buzz. And uh, I have to, my mind was made up, and I never looked back, never regretted coming here. Still going strong. But also look around you. It's not, it was not just that building. It was not just the pavilion. The building you're in now is part of the Royal Pavilion estate. Um, it's the former stables, and also one of George's uh, designs. Obviously, he got his architects in, but it was his idea. And it was built just before the pavilion underwent this uh, John Nash transformation into a Taj Mahal-like building. And just imagine this building going up in 1804. Uh, it was exotic, it looked Moorish, it had the largest dome structure in the country, apart from St. Paul's. Uh, so it was over the top, it was daring, it was inspired, and it was also a little bit dangerous because they weren't quite sure whether the, the, the dome would actually hold up after the scaffolding was removed. 
So, of course, the historians say these buildings that George didn't make Brighton, it had already become a thriving seaside resort and that's what George was attracted to. But George and his buildings really added that extra bit of sparkle to Brighton and it gave it a real popularity boost and he left us this landmark that has become symbolic of the spirit of Brighton really. There's nothing quite like it, there's no one like George and he himself acknowledged that and we have just found in our archives a letter and I'd like to read you a few lines from it from George to one of his many mistresses, 1808 and he says, I think this is really quite remarkable, thou knowest most perfectly, my own own, Isabella, that I am a different animal, a different being from any other in the whole creation, that my feelings, my disposition, my nature, in short, all and everything that is me is in all respects different to any other that either is now, that has, or in all probability, that ever will exist in the whole universe. So. Uh, yeah, he's full of himself, but he's also... <laughs> that, couldn't we apply all of this to Brighton as well? Yeah? So, uh, I love this quote, and we have it. it we have the letter. Um, and what, so it tells us a lot about Brighton, I think. So it's, it's as if he had stamped his character onto Brighton. And what I also like about it is that he was well aware of the bubble he was living in that, and that he could not escape it, and he made the best of it. You cannot imagine Prince Charles making that sort of statement. Um, so it, I think it shows that he was also charming and sensitive, and uh, I like to describe him as this strange orchid, this peacock, uh, among the boring rest of the royal family at the time, the monarchs before and after him. He did not fit in. He was a loose cannon, he was dangerous, and Brighton suited him. And uh, I think without him, we wouldn't be sitting here in this building, and he was certainly the single most influential person who ever lived here. So that's why he's my hero. Please vote for him. <laughs>